Here we're at the HVAC Training Symposium, and I have my friend, Jenry Garcia. And Jenry is amazing. He does some great stuff with blower doors and testing and building science, and I've, I've loved watching his videos. We're going to put a link to his videos in the bottom. Thank you. But uh, Jenry, tell me, what does you do? I'm an HVAC contractor and consultant, really, down in Miami, Florida, and um, just do HVAC. I've been very lucky to be able to implement home performance, you know, chapter, if you will to my business where I do blower doors, I check houses, dog leakage, I just look at the house as a system, look at the house, look at the house as a whole. I've managed to get in touch and stay in touch with really, really smart folks and just get to work, you know what I mean? So I think this is very important. He looks at the house as a system. It's not just the HVAC equipment, but it's the whole house as mm -hmm. a system. They talk about blower door, and I mentioned blower door testing, but somebody who doesn't know what blower door testing is, what's the easiest way to sum that up? So a, uh, a blower door is just really a device that either pressurizes or depressurizes the house to a controlled pressure. This is done to assess and or locate the leakage and the sources of leakage from outside into the home, right? Okay. So this is really important, extremely important. They come up to a home where the client's not happy with the performance of the HVAC and you know they sell them a new one just based on either what they had before or what they think they need or you know what some calculation might have given them, right? But if you don't look at the, uh, at the infiltration value Real bad things can happen. I don't have really a ton of experience in you know uh, heating dominated climate climates, but down in Miami we have tons of humidity. Um, if you look at a tight, a decent, at a decent house, you know, if you look at at least at an average house in terms of in terms of tightness, uh, the total of the latent load in a low calculation when you break it down, it's right around 50-50 between infiltration and internal loads, right? And there's a little bit of, you know, duct heat gains and things like that if the ductwork is in the exposed in the attic, in the vented attic. So that 50% of that you can account for, right? You know, you know how many people you're going to have there. You can have source control for, uh, you know, kitchen, uh, you know, kitchen ventilation, meaning you can exhaust fumes, you can exhaust the, the, you know, the vapors that are created when one is cooking. Same thing with the bathroom, bathroom exhaust, all that good stuff. But you don't really have a way to assess, to, to understand the leakage of a home unless you do a blower door. So uh, if you don't have a blower door number, uh, I mean, would, would you be okay? Uh, maybe, perhaps, but at the same time, if the house is a mess, if this house is very leaky, or if the duct was very leaky and the, the house is just a basket case, that client's gonna end up blaming you for the shortcomings of the AC, of the HVAC you installed, when it really isn't your fault. It's not even the fault of the previous AC that you replace most, most likely, but because you don't know, and now you have to eat it, you know what I mean? So that's how you avoid it. Think of it this way. If you had your air conditioning running, how many windows in your house could you have open, and how far could you have those open to still cool the house with the windows open? And then you're thinking, well, why in the world would you cool your house with the windows open? Well, the fact is that the house is leaking, and it's leaking air. So essentially, not knowing how much the leakage rate is of the house is running your air conditioner with windows open and not even knowing how many windows are open. So it's a big part of that. But also, people think about insulation. We think about efficiency. People talk about insulation. But it doesn't matter how much insulation you have. If the air is mm -hmm. moving through that insulation, it doesn't do any good whatsoever at all. So the air sealing is really more important than the insulation, or at least really high up there, and it's yep. overlooked way too much. Yep. One of the first companies I worked for, we talked about doing blower door and air sealing, God, it was like 20 years ago, and it was the thing that was on people's mind. It's not a new thing. It's finally realizing that it's very important for not only the health of the occupants, not only for energy efficiency, but the health of the building. As you're moving moisture through walls, you're causing all kinds of growth situations. Now imagine if you put a mask, put a hole in your wall and put a mask mm -hmm. in that hole and you were to breathe all of the air coming through that wall where all that moisture, the dust was. This is the air essentially you're breathing in your home. Talking about solving these problems, moving, stopping the air moving through the walls, or at least knowing where your starting point is. Exactly. And then having solutions from there. And this is what we call the whole house system. Now, a lot of people can understand the refrigeration cycle, which is great. All these different aspects that go into it. But what's more important than that is the house itself. And this is a very important and very passionate part of HVAC for me. Yes. And Gentry's doing some really great work with the videos, how to show how to do this testing. So it's a whole other level behind HVAC. And I, I, I'm a big admirer of your Thank work. You. I love what you're doing. Thank you. And I love that you're sharing this information. So we're going to put a link below how you can find him in some of the Facebook links. We're also going to put a link how you can see some of his YouTube videos. And it's really great work. Thank you. Now, did you ever think you'd be doing this kind of work no, now? No, no. 
I've worked for a company for a number of years and I got to be, you know, service manager and all these things. Like I was in charge of, I had a good bit of responsibility and I had to, I was pretty much the, the last line of defense on when it came to consumer complaints. Um, I, like I always kind of realized that there was something else because, you know, you, you walk up to a house where they're having all kinds of problems, IAQ problems, dust problems, uh, high humidity, they can keep this or that other room uh, comfortable. They can keep the house as a whole comfortable. And then you walk up to the unit and you start measuring airflow, or at least estimating it. You start looking at pressure, superheat, subcooling, static pressure. You might even bring a flow hood and start measuring flows coming out of vents and things like that. And, and you just don't see it. You do, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know what's wrong with this unit. Guess what? There is nothing wrong with the unit. That's why That's why there's nothing There's nothing to find there. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just looking at the at a, at a house as a system. It's more than just looking at the HVAC that is inside a house. It's just, the, the HVAC is just part of it. Just got to look at the whole thing. 100% agree. Yeah. So just really awesome seeing how you're advancing, how you're becoming a, a, one of the leaders of this kind of technology and be able to bring this information to more and more contractors and showing the need. How did you get started in HVAC? How did you, what would you do before here and how did you end up in HVAC? Well, HVAC is just about the only thing I've really known in the States. Uh, I, I was born and raised in uh, Havana, Cuba. I came at the age of 21, 2003. My dad was doing HVAC and he was like immersed into that section of, of a good bit. And I started working with him uh, a little bit and just found, uh, I realized that there was a way, you know, that there was a living there. I did kind of fell out of it for like at the beginning, I gotta say. Because, you know, I, I come from this country where there is a, a need for just the very basic things like water, food, medicine. You just, you know, it's a different subject. But things that we really take. Right, right exactly. Right. So I walked into this playground, right? That is the United States where the sky is the limit. At least that's the way I see it. Um, the sky is the limit. You, you are, you are all, the only limiting factor of how far you can go, really, as, as I perceive it. And I just want to know what else was out there. Um, Went to uh, college for a little bit, got into psychology, studying that a little bit, and then uh, you know, then the mechanical engineering side started to, started to get my attention. Switched switched over to that um, after a while, but then I began to realize that there you can make a very very decent living doing HVAC without getting yourself into a whole lot of debt, yeah. and while still being able to live a good life, a family life, you know, being able to afford the needs of your loved ones. Um, so got into that. As I'm progressing in the field, you know, started out started out as a helper, and as I'm progressing in the field, I, you know, I began to see more and more and more situations where, well, it don't work, put a three, don't work, put a four, don't work, put a five. Well, now what? You know what I mean? Find someone else. Um, I'll see you in court. Those type of things. So that what's kind of like opened my eyes and made me realize that there was more. I wanted to take more of a. Uh, home performance approach, like I didn't even know it was even called home performance before, but I knew it, it, there was something more that I wanted to look at. So I started to look in that direction more and more and more. Eventually, uh, me and the leadership of the company that I was at, we just grew apart because they just want to keep doing what they were doing for, mm -hmm. you know, X amount of years. That's fine. And I knew that wasn't the path for me. I've been there before. So uh, kind of, you know, so we, uh, we split, I went on my own. Um, so started my own company, uh, Comfort Dynamics in Miami, Florida, and now I'm here, you know? That's awesome. Doing this. That's very cool. I, Thank you. I love hearing this. We've talked with people from so many different backgrounds, and here's another example of just another background, how we get into HVAC, and how, more importantly, that it changes your life. It gives your life purpose. You've tried some other things and realized yeah. that HVAC was right. That's yeah. really cool. I've, I truly love this career. I love this trade. Mm -hmm. And it's, it provides for your family. It yeah, provides a future. And it, you feel good about being able to do a profession, uh, mm -hmm. having a career something you can fix with your hands. I think it's awesome. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait to see what you have coming up next. Your next videos are there. And again, we're going to have those links in the videos below. Do you have any advice for anybody just getting started in the trade? Put your mind into it. You know, like, just, just dive into it. It is incredibly rewarding. It, it, it is, I, I, I have no words to really express that. You know, it, there's a, a ton of money to be made. Like if you really if you really want to, there's ways to figure out how to you know how to set yourself apart and, and make money. Like in my market, there's that I know of. There's me and two other guys doing what I do. And that's uh, a huge market. And that's a huge market. So look look outside the box. Yep. Just just think outside the box and and set your mind to it. You know, there's a lot that 
there's going to be a lot of self education that has to be uh, has to that has to happen. I mean, because you don't know something, it doesn't automatically mean that you don't know it because nobody teaches you That's so or true. nobody guided you that way. You know, if you see a, if you see a path, you just you just got to sneak through it and and hit it home. You're like a running back trying to trying to trying to run through a secondary. You know what I mean? You just you see it you see a crack, you got you got to sneak through there. You got to push through. Nothing good is easy. Yeah. Almost nothing good is easy. Um, not in HVAC anyways. <laughs> So it's gonna be some growth pains. That's gonna. I'm still going through a lot of that actually. Um, it's gonna be some growth pains. It's gonna be bad days and bad seasons and then things that might not work out for you. But it, if if you feel the itch, by all means, by all means, push through because it's very rewarding. So at this conference, you've uh, we've met a lot of people. We're learning yeah. a lot of stuff as well as we get to share what we do know. Uh -huh. This is the third symposium I've been to all three. What's cool this year is I've had trouble trying to get Jerry in here because. So many people are coming up to him saying they're really loving his videos, they're loving what he's doing, they're, they're, he's really introducing the building science in a really good way. And it's great seeing people look up to you and mm. seeing that growth that you have. And uh, I think that's really awesome. Uh, I, what really makes it worth it is just seeing that I've, it's having like what I do and the, and the content that I've put forth has an impact on, on others, you know, and then that's, it, that's what it's really all about. I have been humbled by my experience this time around. It's really been great. It's awesome. I got very little to complain about. That's fantastic. Yep. Well, I look forward to your next thank you, work. Thank you so much for spending time with us. All right. Thank you, Todd. That's awesome. That was really that, yes. That, that, that is, it was like we have written that a script for that.